Welcome back. In this video, we're going to solve equations of rational expressions. So we are going to have rational expressions or fractions with equations. And you'll need to recognize the difference between an equation and an expression. But a rational equation is equation, so we're going to have an equal sign, that contains at least one rational expression with a variable in the denominator. So here's a couple examples of rational expressions that have variables in the denominator and we're going to be solving equations. So we're going to be solving these for x. Well let's begin by determining the domain of the variables in the following equations. And the domain is the valid inputs. Now keep in mind these are fractions. We have a variable in the denominator, and we know that our denominator better not equal 0. So we know the denominator can't equal 0. So we have to be careful for values of x that make the denominator 0. So in our first sample problem here, we know that x better not become 0, and we also know that 4x better not become 0. So both of these are x can't be 0, so our domain or our valid inputs, the ones we can use, are anything but 0. So our valid values or our domain is anything but 0. So I will let you write something like our domain could be all real numbers except 0, or we could use the notation in the book for all values of x such that x cannot equal 0. Either one of those would work for this particular one. In this problem, we have a couple of different factors for our numerators. We might factor everything just to make sure we have all our denominators correct and here our denominator is x plus 2 times x minus 2 those are the only things in our denominator so then we would know that x plus 2 better never equal 0 and x minus 2 better never equal 0 so then we'll know that x can't be negative 2 and x cannot be positive 2 so using our notation all x's such as x, such that x can't be plus or minus 2. We could do that. Or you could do something like all real numbers except plus or minus 2. I'll let you get away with that. So let's take a look at solving rational equations. First thing we want to do when we solve rational equations is we want to determine the restrictions on the domain, just like we did above. Okay, The denominator cannot equal 0, factor the denominator, set each factor not equal 0, and solve. And determine what x cannot be. So in our problems above, we knew that x could not be 0, and x could not be plus or minus 2. Then we'll want to multiply both sides of the equation by our least common denominator. And this will clear the equation of the denominator. What it'll do is it really will make our denominator 1. Okay? And this only works with equations, so we can only multiply both sides by the common denominator um, to get rid of the equal signs. We're not going to be able to do that when simplifying an expression. So, and again, in our first sample problem up here, our common denominator here was 4x, and here our common denominator was x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. We put that on every single term. Our denominators will become 1. We simplify and solve for the variable. So we might have multiple solutions for x. If we have a quadratic or something to the third power, we might have multiple values for x. 
and then we check to see if our solution is valid. We compare our answers to what we did in the first step. So we're really going to compare our final solution to step one. Okay, so we might have to check our work. And if we come up with something that doesn't work, we call that an extraneous, or what I call it, a phantom root. It's a root that came from somewhere that doesn't happen to work in our original problem. So when we check, we always check in the original problem before we do any canceling. Okay? So make sure you check in your original problem. So let's follow our process. Let's solve the following. So we have negative 3 twentieths plus 2 over x equals 4 over x. And let's check. Looks like x can't be 0 and 4x can't be 0. So x can't be 0. So I've checked my denominator. I found my restriction. So x can be anything else, but it can't be 0. The next thing we want to do is we multiply everything by our common denominator. So our common denominator here is 20x. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply every single term, negative 3 20s, 2 over x, 5 over 4x, times 20x. I'm not going to multiply this first fraction by x over x and the second one by 20 over 20. I'm not seeking a common denominator so I can add. I am multiplying every term by the common denominator so the denominators cancel. When I multiply by 20x, I'm really multiplying by 20x over 1. So my factors of my numerator will always cancel. I want my denominator to become 1. I don't want a denominator. I can't stress that enough. So let's go ahead and multiply the first term by 20x. Well, when you multiply 3 20s by 20x, the 20s will cancel. So I'm just left with negative 3x all over 1. I'm not going to write the 1. Then I'm going to take 20x and I'm going to multiply it by 2 over x. Well, again, I have x over x, so the x's are going to cancel, and I'm left with plus 2 times 20, which is 40, equals, and I will multiply again by 5 over 4x, so the x's will cancel. And 20 over 4 is 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. The x's cancel, so I'm left with 5 times 5. And you may multiply that out. So we get negative 3x plus 40 equals 25. I'll subtract 40 from both sides. Negative 3x equals negative 15. And x equals 5. I don't have any restrictions here. x can't be 0, but x is 5, so that is our final answer. x is 5, and that should work in our original equation. Let's go on to sample problem 2. A lot more complicated. So let's go ahead and factor. We've got to find our restrictions on our domain. So I'm going to factor the denominator here. This is going to factor to x plus 3 times x minus 2. And the middle one, that's going to factor to x plus 2 times x minus 2. And x squared plus 5x plus 6, that all is going to factor to x plus 3 times x plus 2. So, let's take a look at my restrictions of my factors. Well, I've got a common denominator. It looks like my common denominator will be 
x plus 3 and x plus 2 and x minus 2. And we have to set that not equal to 0. None of those can equal 0. So x plus 3 better not equal 0, x plus 2 better not equal 0, and x minus 2 better not equal 0. So x better not equal negative 3, x better not equal negative 2, x better not equal positive 2. Anything else looks like that will work. So I have a pretty complicated common denominator here. So let's go ahead and rewrite our problem and take a look at our common denominator. So x4 over x plus 3 times x minus 2 minus, ooh, this minus sign is fraught with peril. Watch out for that. That's going to be dangerous. Minus uh, 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 2 all over x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now, because we have an equal sign, our goal here is to, to make the denominator 1. We want to get rid of the denominator. So you guys that want to make multiply this by x plus 2 over x plus 2, this first term, and multiply this second term by x plus 3 over x plus 3, and the third term by, or the this other term, the final term by x minus 2 over x minus 2, that's legal, but it's not real helpful because it doesn't eliminate the denominator. We still have it. So let's multiply every term, so this whole thing, both sides, left side and right side, by our common denominator of x plus 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. So let's multiply, and that's over 1. So all this is over 1, so these are all three numerators. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to multiply all of that times that first term. Well, x plus 3 and x plus x minus 2 are going to cancel here. So the only thing that's going to be preserved is the x plus 2. And notice I'm not going to distribute right away, so I'll be left with 4 times x plus 2. The x plus 3 and the x minus 2 cancel. Minus. I'm going to multiply all of this again by this next term. The x plus 2 and the x minus 2 are going to cancel, so I'm left with negative 1 times x plus 3. That minus sign is fraught with peril. Equals. I have to multiply my final term by x plus the common denominator. I have x plus 3 times x plus 2 in my denominator. So those will cancel. I'm left with just the x minus 2. So we get 2 times x minus 2. So my denominator of every one of my terms now has become 1. I've applied my fundamental property. I've done the same thing to the left side and to the right side. So I'm all good here. So I'll distribute the 4. I get 4x plus 8 minus x minus 3 equals 2x minus 4. I combine all my like terms. I'll subtract 2x from both sides. So 4x minus 2x. So that is just x. And I will add 4 to both sides. So I get 8 plus 4 is 12. Minus 3 is 9. So I've got x plus 9 equals 0. I guess I didn't have to do that. I get x equals 9. And I go back and take a look here at what x can't be. Well, 9 isn't one of them, so I am all set. x equals 9. 
Let's go on to our final sample problem. We'll do some factoring. So I've got x plus x squared plus 2x minus 3. So I need factors of negative 3 that add up to positive 2. So that would be 3 and 1. So x plus 3 times x minus 1. So my common denominator is x plus 3 times x minus 1. So we can probably eyeball that x better not be negative 3 and x better not be positive 1, right? We can't let those cannot equal 0. So we have 2 over x plus 3 minus 1 over x minus 1, that minus sign is from apparel, equals negative x squared minus 3x all over x plus 3 times x minus 1. So we'll multiply everything by our common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 1. We're going to multiply every term by that. So when I multiply 2 over x plus 3 by this, the x plus 3 is going to cancel and I'm left with 2 times x minus 1. Don't try and do too much in any one step. Leave this undistributed. You can see what's going on. You'll find any kind of mistakes you make. Take your time. Go step by step. We multiply the next term by our common denominator, the x minus 1's will cancel. So I'm left with minus 1 times x plus 3 equals, now here, in the last one, both of our factors cancel, so I have nothing left to multiply, so I get negative x squared minus 3x all over 1. So when I multiply by that, both of those cancel, both of the my red ones cancel, so I'm all good. Let's go ahead and distribute 2x minus 2 minus x minus 3. Right, I've got to take the opposite of both of those things. Equals negative x squared minus 3x. Well, I don't like negative x squared, so I'm going to add x squared to both sides. So I get x squared combine my like terms here, well, let's go ahead and add 3x to both sides. So I have 2x minus x is x plus 3x, so that's x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. So I have a quadratic, so a is 1. I'm going to factor. I need factors of negative 5 that add to 4 when that would be plus 5 and minus 1. So I get x equals negative 5 and x equals 1. Let's go up and take a look here. Huh, x can't equal 1. That's a illegal solution. That's an invalid input, which means even though 1 is positive and 1 would probably work, 1 would force my denominator here to be 0. So that is an extraneous root. Uh, it's an invalid input. It won't work. So our final answer is x equals negative 5. And there are three really good samples for solving equations for rational expressions, and we will see you in class.